The Chinese martial art has a long and deep history, made of people with strong personality, story and tales that lurk in the history of Chinese culture. I want to present is an idea that came to life a few years ago to introduce some of the best masters in the field of traditional Chinese martial arts community. As opposite to a world of martial arts that is today dominated by violence, disrespect and presumption, I believe that could be a good opportunity to know this master and to hear their history from their voices and their location in the field of Chinese martial art. Masters who help her to write it characterize it by cultural differences, system and approach. Despite these differences, the generation that have followed their whole shared a common focus, crucial and indispensable, experience. The human and martial experience that is handed down from master to student in a continuous flow of passing time. An experience made of techniques, value, location, special people and traditions. In my martial path and life, I have been lucky to know and practice with some of these masters. And with this video interview, I ask them questions to give you a flower of their history, of their system and their way of thinking. I'd like to add in advance my master, my Kung Fu family, whole master friend who have given me the honor of this interview. Thank you and Fung Yin, welcome to my video. When Ru Shan Jin Ru Yun means solid as a mountain and light as a cloud in Mandarin. This is Tai Ji Chuan master Kao Fei Shan or Jesse Cao. I know Master Jesse for many years and every time I meet him and I train with him it's always a pleasure to work on the development and training of the internal heart of Tai Chi and Qi Gong. His Tai Chi is intense and strong and his life story is closely linked to the practice and study of Tai Chi and Qi Gong. His curriculum and knowledge in Tai Chi system and Qi Gong is very wide and for many years he has devoted his life to promotion of ancient Qigong and Taiji technique as a prevention system and lifestyle methods. His child absorbed the culture and Taoist philosophy, deeply influenced his approach and vision of life. For that reason, I can define him solid as a mountain and light as a cloud. Master Jesse Cao. My Tai Chi story um, is uh, quite different than normal uh, people or normal boy start Kung Fu training. So actually I started Tai Chi when I was seven years old and uh, the doctor found out I have a um, terrible uh, illness. And I don't remember exactly what the illness is, but I only remember um, my leg is swollen and um, the people, you know, the doctor put a finger on, you can see clear a finger mark. And uh, I was told like uh, my kidney not healthy. So I start take uh, like uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, the medicine uh, really a bitter, horrible taste. So each time I take in, I need to throw out. So that's how the traditional Chinese doctor, traditional Chinese medicine doctor, suggests my mom said, have to let this boy try Tai Chi practice. So if Tai Chi can improve his immunity, improve his body condition. That's how I start, not as a Kung Fu uh, student, not like a um, get a Sifu into the Kung Fu um, practice. So I start with self-healing practice. So it's uh, like a miracle. After one year, my illness almost totally gone. And after two years, I am better than normal boy even. 
So that gave me a like a magic uh, uh, feeling. So I start practice more, and I start like the way as a kung fu practice. Okay. So in my hometown, uh, my I I was born in Penglai, Shandong Province of China. So it's a national. Famous little town because we have the Peng Lai Temple. It is the tallest temple. So the Tai Chi practice and the self healing in the little town is more like a become a tradition. And uh, whenever you mention Peng Lai, all over. China, they will say, "Oh, you are from the town of the eight immortals." So that's uh, the uh, short story how I started. It. And uh, when I was young, actually, um, my body condition recovered so well, and uh, I'm more like athletic. So in that time, I was born in 1958. Okay. Um, China, they have the Shaolin Tai Chi School. They mean the sport、um, school. They pick up the、uh, younger children, and then if they say they they have some future to be a athletic,、uh, they will training you there. So actually, I was picked by the Wu Shu. Team, but my mom will not allow me to do the kung fu because wu shu because wu shu is a bigger、uh, term. Any kind of traditional kung fu is under wu shu. This is a big name. So my mom want me carry family tradition to be a, a scholar. So more like a,、uh, lead me to took exam national exam for university study. So I did, and when I got to Beijing in 1978, I really the the university had a wushu team, so I right away join in the wushu team, and、uh, the good luck is the, the wushu team coach is the Professor Li Deyin. He is the, the third generation of young style Tai Chi lineage. So he's the worldwide famous. I will say he's the top、uh, academic professor in Tai Chi all over China. So he created like a, his uncle created a Tai Chi from twenty four, and he. He is one of the three professor created the international standard competition form 42. So anyway, I study under him for four years during my university、uh, student study, and after I graduate, I will ask to be a Assistant professor in the same university, Renmin University, working there as a professor teaching. So that gave me a, another five-year opportunity to study under Professor Li Deyin. So I will say Professor Li Deyin is my most important、uh, uh, Tai Chi Shifu, and because he is the Uh, professor, and、uh, that time not allowed to take the traditional discipleship. So I'm only a a student, so not a disciple or professor leader. And my discipleship actually come from、uh, Chen Village.、Uh, during the ten almost ten years in Beijing, I see a lot of different Tai Chi style, 
and uh, I found out uh, all pointing to the Chen Jiago Chen village. So I visited there and I met those uh, uh, currently like uh, the four best grandmaster. So they are like uh, Chen Xiaowang, Chen Zhengwei, Zhu Tiantai, and Wang Xian. The three of them are my teacher and uh, my sufu for many years because I um, invited them to come to the United States, uh, give uh, seminars, workshop, and I throw at the translator. Tai Chi, um, right now it's getting popular and um, most people want to know where the Tai Chi come from. Well, I will tell you Tai Chi as a um, routine or the form practice. It started about 350 years ago from Chen village, Chen Yago. However, before that, Tai Chi as a concept or as a toyist practice is already. So we can see the most famous story is the Zhang Sanfeng, is a toyist about 900 years ago in the Wudang Mountain. So that's the famous story is he. Uh, create the Tai Chi practice not in a form or routine. It's a uh, natural reaction to the inner energy practice. Chinese called Zi Fa Gong. It's once you use the Tai Chi Yin and Yang concept practice your body will have some type of automatically reaction. So this is the, the concept of Tai Chi, but it is not a Tai Chi routine or form. Until 350 years ago, Chen village, there are person named Chen Wang Ting, he was uh, in the Chinese Ming Dynasty. He served actually in the army. The army is under Qi Ji Guang, General Qi Ji Guang. General Qi was a national hero because he trained the Ming Dynasty's army to protect uh, mainland of China and um, he collect all traditional Chinese Kung Fu different style and pick up the best move and write into a book called Ji Jiao Xin Shu it's a you can translate it into the new army training method so actually Chen style Tai Chi, the original set, most posture is from the General Qi's army training method. So that gives you an idea, Chen style Tai Chi is the, from the battlefield. When Chen Wang Ting retired from the army back to his hometown. He think about how he can um, continue practice. But you know when you retire, you get a pretty old age. Your body condition, you know, it's not that easy to keep the hard practice. So then he combined the toist meditation and he combined 
the traditional Chinese medicine, the Jing Luo, the energy channel. So even he studied the traditional Chinese medicine in Zhao Bao Zhen, a little bit larger town from Chen village. So he created the first routine of Tai Chi Chuan. So that's the, where Tai Chi come from. After that, he told his family, said, this is a uh, powerful Kung Fu if you practice in the right way. And uh, he don't, did not want the family teach outside of the village until later there a young family boy, his name is Yang Luchan. He heard about Tai Chi. He wanted to experience it. He visited the Chen village. He begging to learn, but the Chen family said no, no, no. For many generations, we were told this is only for Chen family. We don't want to teach outside. So this is Yang Lu Chen. He insists, and uh, he stay in the Chen village, willing to be a uh, serving, serving, serving man in order to see and to learn more like uh, uh, secretly. No Sifu will teach him really in person. But uh, because his, uh, his uh, um, die-hard, strong will, and uh, he's a good person actually, um, his attitude really make the Chen fam family feel, you know, he can help to promote Tai Chi in the future. So that's why they started teaching him. And uh, he spent uh, about 10 years. During the 10 years, uh, he go out, test his Kung Fu and return, learn more. And go out, Chen Village, travel, meet all the other Kung Fu masters, test the Kung Fu and return, learn more. Totally three years, three, sorry, three times out of the village return. And finally, he, he achieved high level. So he was hired by the emperor, bodyguard, in Beijing. And even the emperor award him a yellow color, the gold yellow color jacket, which is very, very special. If you put that yellow jacket on, everybody will respect you because that's the power. Only the emperor family can use the yellow. Any other uh, people, you cannot use it even. So, but he respects uh, his Sifu, Chen village. Each time he visits the Chen village, before into the village, he will get down from his horse and take off the yellow jacket, put it into a bag because he don't want to show off in front of the Chen family. So that's I tell you the old time, uh, how he appreciate, he get the real Kung Fu from the Chen family. So during the, now, during the um, uh, Beijing teaching the uh, emperor's uh, bodyguard, he taught uh, quite a few good uh, uh, martial artists, one of them, is Chuan Yu, which is the Mongolian. It's not the Han Chinese. They are from outside of the Han. And the Chuan Yu is smart. He learned and he achieved higher level. Once his uh, Sifu passed away, he teach and create his own style called Wu style. That's the Northern Wu, how it started. So, in the same time, 
There are another style called a small how style. This also connect back to the Chen village. However, the practice a little different because Chen village's knowledge also um, in the nearby Zhao Bao. It's a like a larger town, and they practice a little bit different than the original Chen village. I was told actually they get a Wang Zhongyue's Tai Chi Quan Pu, like a Tai Chi classic, and then they understand that classic from different approach. So that's why their practice is different from the traditional Chen village practice. And then from them come out a, another Tai Chi style, which is the Sun style. Sun style Tai Chi also very popular because the founder himself, Sun Lu Tang, is already a top martial artist in China during his years. His famous father, Ba Guo and Xing Yi, which is in China, we have three internal martial arts school or lineage, Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Ba Guo. Sun Lu Tang is an expert already in Xing Yi and Ba Hua. However, when he reached his peak of the Kung Fu, which is he also getting, you know, a little over the, I mean, 50 years old, he discovered Tai Chi is much, much soft in practice. But the way it developed internal power is so effective. So he willing not give up his Xing Yin Ba Gua, willing to be humble, study Tai Chi from the Hao style, Hao Shao Ru. When he learned Tai Chi, he still connect his Xing Yi and Ba Gua's knowledge. And after he finished the learning, he created his own style, which is called Sun style Tai Chi. So that's the five major Tai Chi style. Come from. Traditional Tai Chi is Kung Fu, okay? Then most people see Tai Chi right now worldwide is uh, the modern, contemporary Tai Chi. Uh, in my opinion, I will call that uh, um, Tai Chi Chao, Tai Chi exercise, not Tai Chi Kung Fu, because the way they practice is just a exercise. It's not practice the real Kung Fu. So I would like to use two terms here. Traditional Tai Chi Chuan is a practice. Contemporary modern Tai Chi Chuan is an exercise. Practice something you can achieve a level. Like you practice the music, you can be a, a musician. You practice the painting art, you can be a you know, artist. But your exercise, body exercise, you can never achieve a master. You never achieve to be an expert. You are just an exercise, like sport exercise. So my opinion is uh, Tai Chi, traditional Tai Chi Chuan practice has the real value. Contemporary competition 
uh, well, I should not say competition. Competition is a type of still good promotion, you know, promote people to see how it looks like. But the competition should throw a way to promote Tai Chi, let more people see. But if you want Tai Chi Kung Fu, you need back to traditional Tai Chi Chuan, not the modern contemporary Tai Chi. Tai Chi Chuan, traditionally, there are two values. Number one is the Kung Fu, self-defense. That's 100% sure, original. That's the purpose. However, because Tai Chi Chuan, the practice is soft, it's slow, it's training the inner energy, not only physical, outside. So the side product is the inner energy circulation can improve a person's immunity. Myself is an example. I start Tai Chi not from the Kung Fu boy learn martial art. I start Tai Chi is self healing So Tai Chi, the, the way how you practice is strong your inner, inner core. It's not a physical core energy. It's inner core energy. That will give your inner organ the strength to make you healthy. So, Tai Chi's value is Kung Fu self-defense and self-healing for your health. And also, you know, Tai Chi's value uh, share the same traditional Chinese Kung Fu, which is a discipline. You practice something, you need to spend time work on it. And the respect, respect Sufu, respect your classmates. And it's a, we call it it's a discipline um, for uh, you to behave and um, it also gives you a uh, calm, uh, focusing attitude for your life or any other activity. In China, we have a, um, a traditional theme like uh, when you're ready, uh, your teacher is at the door. So what that means is uh, um, a good student, you will have a good master. Because this is more like a magic uh, match. So when you were young, you may search a good master to teach you the real Kung Fu. Actually, a good master, they are also looking for a good student to pass his knowledge because he want people to carry forward. He want to find that person talented enough and determined and um, loyalty. So this is the good master will find a good student. Or in Tai Chi world, you have good energy, you will attract the good energy the person come to you. So that's uh, what we see. You just keep practice. When the time coming, your teacher your real teacher 
will be in front of you. In this, the last 20 years, um, myself from a practice uh, changed to teaching as the major um, thing. I can see uh, worldwide uh, each year, like uh, special in Europe, uh, I teach like about 10 countries. Um, all the countries, I see the trend. The people know Tai Chi normally from uh, contemporary, the modern Tai Chi. And they study and they uh, performing really well. But in my uh, feeling, Tai Chi the future is uh, self-healing. Gradually take over the self-defense as the primary. So I'm not means Tai Chi the Kung Fu self-defense will devalue. It is still a great cross training. For example, any Kung Fu, you want to reach to a high level, you need the inner power involved. They call the, the inner strength. Because the physical strength, you have a limitation. And when you're getting older, you cannot compete with the 20 years, 30 years physically. But Tai Chi's training can help you maintain the inner strength into your later year. You still can handle the younger fighter. But what I, my uh, idea is uh, the future Tai Chi's self-healing will be the primary and the Tai Chi's self-defense become secondary. Conserve the, for example, MMA uh, mixed martial art, right? The fighting. Tai Chi training cannot make you a MMA. Because the Tai Chi is a self-defense, you don't want to throw the first punch, first kick. You always borrow the opponent upcoming force and lead that force into empty. You capture the opportunity, you punish him. That is the major thing. They cannot be a MMA is attacking, offensive as the major goal. You cannot. So, but it's a super cross training and the super strong your inner energy to last you like you are 30 years old. You still can fight 20 years old. Even you're over 30. You're almost close to 40 years old, you still can fight 20 or 30 if you, you have the cross-training of the internal power. But my point is future is self-healing. Because the modern life gives people a lot of stress. And your inner organ actually under stressful condition. Tai Chi, the practice, the inner energy circulation, the inner organs relaxation can make you healthy, strong your immunity.